Hi, Sophia. We are on chapter 15 today, and it has one of my very, very favorite stories in it, what we call the prodigal son. Prodigal just means, like, wandering. But we start with the parable of the lost sheep. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear him, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me! I have found my lost sheep! I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me! I have found my lost coin! In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to, his fa said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has, filled the, has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and I never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So we have three stories of things being lost, right? He says... If a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one goes missing, he doesn't say, well, I still have 99. 99 out of a hundred is good. He said he leaves the 99, he goes to search for the one, and when he finds the one who's maybe wandered away and gotten into a dangerous place, he brings him back and he rejoices that he has the one left. And if a woman loses a coin, she doesn't say, I still have nine. It's not a big deal. She'll search her whole house for it. And then he says, what if the thing you lost was your son? So the son asks for money, and it's kind of a way of saying to his dad, the most important thing about you is your money. Like, give me the money that you would give me when you died, and I'm going to go off. And I think that must have made the father so sad that the son just saw him as a source of money, that all, the, that all he wanted from his dad was money. So he gives the son the money, and the son goes off, and he spends it all, and he's having parties, and... He's not taking, he doesn't care about what's happening to his family at all. 
And it's only when things get really, really bad for him and he is starving that he's like, well, at least the, the workers at my dad's farm live better than this, so I'll go back and ask if I can just be a worker. But his father immediately is, you know, he hasn't heard from him in maybe years. We don't know how long. He might have thought his son was dead. And when he sees this son coming back, he's so thrilled that his son is alive. That he's like, I'm forgetting everything that you did. I'm not mad about the money. I'm not, I'm not going to say, think of what he could have said. He could have said, well, this is a lesson for you, isn't it? Maybe you need to suffer a little bit so that you'll remember what to do right the next time. He doesn't do any of those, even though maybe he deserves to. Maybe the dad deserves to say, you should work like a hired person for a while. You should work like one of the servants and see what that's like so that you'll realize what you gave up. And instead, the father says, I'm so glad you're here. We missed you so much. And we're going to have this big party. And we're going to, you know, when they say kill the fatted calf, that means like the, the calf that they've been intentionally fattening up so that it's really juicy and delicious to eat that you would have saved for something really big like a marriage. He says, we're going to kill the fatted calf and I'm going to put the best clothes on you and put the ring on your finger that says that you're my son. And do you notice how the older son responds? He's, he's pretty salty. He's like, you never did this for me and I'm not the one who ran away. I'm the good son who stayed and has worked this whole time and you never even gave me a goat to have a party with my friends and I just get overlooked. And you know what? In our lives, we're going to be both sons at some point. Sometimes we're going to be the one who feels like, I've done everything right and I'm getting overlooked. And somebody who doesn't deserve it as much as me is getting something I think I deserve. And the reminder there is, you're going to get what you deserve. The father says, everything I have is yours. Everything that, you, that I have, you will inherit. But... That shouldn't keep you from rejoicing. We thought your brother was dead and he's back. So he's saying basically, chill out a little bit. Don't let your own selfishness and your own worry about what you're going to get when it's your moment dim the fact that we thought your brother was dead and now he's not. He's back to us. And we're a family again. Celebrate that with us because you're our son too and it's not a real celebration if you're not there. And at some point, we're going to be the prodigal, prodigal son who hurts our family and does things that they wish we hadn't and doesn't consider what their feelings are and will go off and do something and not think about how it affects other people. And then we have to come back kind of hangdog and say, I didn't make a good choice there. And what God is showing us is that the way our parents love us and the way God loves us is they don't throw it in our face and they don't say, I told you that was the wrong thing to do, didn't I? I guess you'll learn now. They say, I'm so glad you're back. We missed you so much. Sometimes when we do, especially as you get older, when we do bad things, we feel like God is ashamed of us and we're almost embarrassed to talk to him because we think that he's disappointed and this story reminds us that instead what God says is he's running out to meet us. He's not even waiting for us to get all the way back. He's running out to meet us to say, I missed you so much and I'm so glad you're back.